Welcome to WP Mail SMTP. In this video, we're going to show you how to fix your site's email deliverability issues by setting up WP Mail SMTP with Gmail. Email deliverability is probably the biggest and most common issue that WordPress users face on a day-to-day -day basis. This includes important emails either ending up in a user's spam folder or not being delivered at all. The best way to fix this issue is to authenticate your site's emails using SMTP and selecting a specific mailer option to help you deliver your emails reliably each and every time. Without further ado, let's get started. After installing the WP Mail SMTP plugin and verifying your license key, scroll down to find the From Email field. Here you can enter the email address that all of your site's emails will be sent from. You'll also see a Force From Email checkbox that you can select if you'd like to make it so all emails sent from your site will come from the email address specified above. Below that will be the From Name field. Any name you enter here will be associated with the emails your site sends out. Your website's name will be written here by default, but you can change it to whatever you'd like. Like the Force From Email checkbox, the Force From Name option will apply to all of your site's emails. Scroll down until you see the Mailer section to view all of the available options. When you select Google or Gmail, a new section will appear below that will contain two fields, Client ID and Client Secret. In order to get these two pieces of information, you'll need to open a new tab or window, log into your Google account, and open your Google Cloud Console. Be sure to keep this tab open as we'll need to come back to copy a piece of information later in the tutorial. On the Cloud Console dashboard, you'll need to first either create a new project or select an existing one. Click on the Projects drop-down from the blue admin bar at the top of the page, and in the following pop-up, either select an existing project or select New Project in the right corner. For this tutorial, let's create a new project. Enter a project name, and select an organization from the available drop-downs. Afterwards, click Create. The next step is to enable the Gmail API for your project, so in the sidebar, click on APIs and Services, then select Library. In the Category column, click on Email, or you can search for Gmail API in the available search bar. Click on Gmail API, and then click on the Enable button. Once the Gmail API has been enabled, you should be redirected to the Gmail API Overview page. Click on Create Credentials, and on the next page, you'll need to answer a few questions before you can receive them. For the question, which API are you using? Select Gmail API from the available dropdown. In the next question, what data will you be accessing? Select User Data and then click Next. Google is going to ask you for basic information about your app, some of which will be required. In the App Name field, you can enter whatever name you'd like. In User Support Email, select your email address from the available dropdown. The App Logo field is optional, but if you'd like, you can upload a logo here. Add your email address in the Email Address field under Developer Contact Information, and when you're done, click Save and Continue. The next step regarding scopes is optional, so you can scroll down to the end of this section and click on the Save and Continue button to proceed to the next page. The next step is to set up your OAuth client ID. For the Application Type dropdown, select Web Application. The following name field can either be left as it is with its default name, or you can change it to whatever you'd like. This name is only used to identify the client in the console and will not be shown to anyone else. The following section, Authorized JavaScript Origins, can be skipped, so scroll to the Authorized Redirect URI section instead. Tab back to your WordPress site to return to the Settings page of WP Mail SMTP. Copy the URL, from the Authorized Redirect URI field, and then go back to your Google Cloud Console. Click on the Add URI button and paste in the URL you just copied from your website. Afterwards, click Create. Once this is done, you'll be able to see your client ID in the Your Credentials section, but you don't need to copy them to your clipboard just yet. Instead, click on the Done button at the bottom of the page. The next step is to switch your newly created app to external mode since by default, Google will set it to internal mode instead. On the sidebar, go to OAuth Consent ID, and under User Type, click on the button called Make External. 
In the pop-up that appears, select the In Production option and click on the Confirm button. The publishing status will then be changed to In Production. On the left side menu, click on Credentials, and in the following page, you'll see a section called OAuth 2.0 Client IDs. Click on the pencil icon to view your client ID and client secret. On the right side, you'll see both pieces of information that you'll need to copy and paste into their corresponding fields on your website. So first, copy the client ID, and then tab back to your website. Paste the value you just copied into the client ID field. Go back to your Google console, copy the client secret, then go back to your website and paste this value into the client secret field. When you're done, click on the Save Settings button. When the page refreshes, you'll see a button called Allow Plugin to Send Emails Using Your Google Account. Click on it to be taken to the Google Login screen where you'll be asked for permission to have your site send emails on your behalf. If you're using a free Gmail account, you may see a screen that says, Google hasn't verified this app. Don't be alarmed if this appears as this only happens because Google hasn't verified your app and there isn't a need to verify it because you just created this app for your own use. If this happens, click on the advanced link on the bottom left corner and then click on the link that says, Go to wpmailsmtb.com, parentheses, unsafe. Afterwards, click Continue. When you return to the WPMail SMTP settings page, a message letting you know that the connection was successful will appear. To make sure everything is working properly, let's send out a test email. Click on the Email Test tab at the bottom of the page, and in the Send To field, you can enter whatever email address you have access to to receive the test email. When you're done, click Send Email. When the test email has been sent, check your inbox to find the newly arrived message. And that's all there is to it. You now know how to set up WP Mail SMTP with Gmail. If you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to visit WPMailSMTP.com and check out our documentation page, where we have step-by-step -step written instructions that can help you get started and learn more about what WP Mail SMTP has to offer. If you need any extra technical help, you can always go to our contact page and reach out to our support team.